you live in a crowded city, or you enjoy listening to drum and bass with a side of tea, or you're on a budget, front wheel drive cars are designed specifically for you. They have become icons of the younger generation and hold a special place in everyone's heart, even if you hate them. This week, I'm covering the bestest front wheel drive cars ever made. City 2 Turbo is a super light, super compact, amazingly stylish front wheel drive car that came with its own foldable motorcycle that neatly tucks away in its trunk. The concept was created for crowded cities like Tokyo which have premium rates on parking. So people could park as close as possible to work, then ride the 50cc moto compo the rest of the way. The Honda City was an 80s hot hatch icon, and not just because of the sweet little motorcycle on the trunk, but because of an innovative upright seating position that created more legroom. The City was targeted at tall young men because of all the legroom. Room. But the City 2 Turbo Power two. did not care how tall you were because it was fast. It was an early product of world famous tuning house and race car constructor Mugen. Mugen was founded by Soichiro Honda's son, Hirotoshi, that introduced a turbo for the car that more than doubled the horsepower. To match the power, the City 2 Turbo got a wider track and a wide body made by Pina Farina, the same guys that design Italian supercars. The Bulldog, as it was nicknamed, went on to have its own racing league and is an early example of a car that was designed and sold as a lifestyle product for the younger generation. With a car this good coming in at number 10, you better believe this entire list is gonna be really good. One front wheel drive car you may not have known is real good is the Cobalt SSTC coming in at number nine. A highly underrated car that set a front wheel drive Nürburgring lap record at eight minutes, 22 seconds in 2008. GM's performance division sorted out the Cobalt to maximize its competitiveness on the track. They swapped out the supercharger for a turbo, giving it 260 horsepower and a zero to 60 of 5.7 seconds. And it could hit 160 miles an hour. That's thanks to a taller gear ratio. But on a track like the Nürb, more power is not the only thing you need. And like most Nürburgring record holders of any category, its suspension was specifically developed to handle the hilly, bumpy, and twisty nature of the course, which resulted in a suspension that could mitigate afflictions like torque steer while still being soft enough to daily drive on the street. The Cobalt SSTC also comes with big Brembo brakes, the ability to shift gears without lifting the throttle, launch control, and a five disc anthology of Lincoln Park. Get ready for this oddball, the 1970 Cadillac Eldorado. The Eldorado got its power from an insanely large 500 cubic inch 8.2 liter V8, the largest V8 ever put in a production car. And trust me, it needed it. When you think of front wheel drive, you think of tiny, two doors, small engine, partying teenager. But this Colossus weighed in at nearly 5,000 pounds and measured in at over 18 feet long. My dad's deep sea fishing boat wasn't even that long. No joke, I'm not quite sure who this thing was built for. All I know is that he or she probably drinks King Cobra out of a champagne glass. The engine was good for 400 horsepower and rocketed the Eldorado to zero to 60 in 7.6 seconds. A theoretical top speed of 126 mile per hour while driving a horizontal skyscraper is not only impressive, it's downright dangerous. I don't even think a brick wall would stand a chance against this thing. It had an enormous sunroof, comfy ass seats, and like most Cadillacs, it completely ignores speed bumps. Honestly, I want an Eldorado now, and I also want platform shoes with fish inside to go along with it. Clio RS 182 Trophy, coming in at number seven, was one of the greatest hot hatches ever made. The Clio itself is the world's all-time best-selling French vehicle. And this second generation Clio was a limited performance edition that outshined the rest. All 550 production units came in one color option, Capsicum Red, and they were initially only sold in the UK. Priced at 15,500 euros, it was a serious bargain for performance. Renault Sport hooked this car up with some serious performance upgrades. Remote Reservoir Dampers is a suspension component that is more commonly used on race cars and is about 10 times more expensive than standard struts offered on a base model. That means this lightweight hatchback is absolutely planted through the turns. And the 16 valve 2 liter engine got the Renault Sport treatment as well, giving it 182 horsepower that some claim can give it a 0 to 60 time of 6 seconds. It's one of the last lightweight hatchbacks that is so hyper it can turn drum and bass into sensual R&B. Respect. This next car literally changed the automotive landscape forever and it's the OG of all front wheel drive cars. The Mini MK1 influenced hundreds of economy cars that followed with its transverse mounted engine. Sure, other cars did it before, but the Mini actually sold, proving that mounting the engine sideways to power the front wheels could work. It gained serious popularity after being featured in one of the most popular car chases of all time, the original Italian job. The movie showed how versatile the Mini is for city driving and sales went through the roof. You can learn more about this movie by 
by watching my best 60s car chase video later on. Anyway, it's possible that without the Mini Cooper, I might not be talking about any of the cars on this list. Besides influencing car design and being perfect for crowded cities, the Mini was also a great driver's car, winning countless road races and rallies. With a short wheelbase and a low center of gravity, the Mini had godlike maneuverability and wasn't afraid to take on cars with way more horsepower. The classic Mini design was so good, they didn't stop building it until the year 2000, selling over five and a half million Minis over the course of its life. It's the ultimate underdog, and it's more than deserving to be on this list. If you want something that's loud, Italian, and allegedly gets you babes, but you can't afford a supercar, well then the Fiat 500 Abarth is one of the cutest little cars you can buy today. But don't confuse cuteness for weakness, because once you turn the key, it becomes unmistakably badass. The Abarth might be one of the best sounding cars on the road today, and that's because it doesn't have a muffler. That's right, the turbo cuts down so much noise that Fiat didn't bother making the car any quieter. That's the secret to its awesome exhaust note. Besides the heavenly exhaust note, the Fiat is actually super fun to drive. I mean, it's practically the same size as the OG Mini Cooper. It's not the most powerful car around, but the exhaust note alone will make you feel like Giancarlo Fischella when you're bombing around downtown. Plus, if you want more power, it's highly tunable and can become a serious little beast. The reason this car is so special is while everyone else in the industry is making their classic front wheel drive cars much bigger, Fiat went against the grain and stuck to their roots, leaving the 500 to be a tiny little city ripper we all love. The Gain RS has always been the go-to when talking high-performance hatchbacks in the European market. The first two generations were highly praised, each setting their own new lap records on the Nürburgring. And right when it seemed like it couldn't get any better, Renault released this third generation of the Gain RS. And yes, it too set its own record around the green hell before the Civic Type R showed up. But if you ever partake in the Tourist in Farten, which is the last couple of hours that the Nürburgring opens up its gates to anyone and everyone who wants to drive it, you'll be completely swarmed by these cars flying all over the track. With a small more potent 1.8 liter turbo and a whole bunch of technical suspension upgrades. It's a serious driver's car. On top of that sheer performance, I think this car is the best looking one on the list, even considering the godlike presence of the Eldorado. But we can't buy the Megane RS in the US, so it's disqualifying from winning anything. Civic Type R is the holy grail of front wheel drive cars here in the US because for the longest time, we never got it. It took 20 years, but the Civic Type R finally landed on American shores last year, and it's a showstopper. Currently the fastest front wheel drive car around the Nürburgring, which means it's the fastest car you can drive around any town with shitty roads. To be totally honest, the car makes a major impression when rolling up to boba shops, but to me, it's a little bit all over the place. It's super edgy and therefore cool, but you can spot it from a mile away, sort of like one of us Americans walking around any foreign country. And if you look at one of these things up close, there's a lot of fake venting that sort of breaks my heart a little bit. But that doesn't stop the Type R from being an amazing hatchback that is also one of the quickest out there. It's currently the most hyped up front wheel drive on the planet, and I don't believe it should overshadow the next two cars on this list. Golf GTI Mark 1 is without a doubt one of the biggest hot hatch icons ever made, but the new 2016 GTI Club Sport is a serious track weapon. Created as a response to the latest front wheel drive Nürburgring record, it was so close to taking the title. No longer can VW's 2 liter engine carry the nickname 2 point slow. With a boost function that accesses a 10% increase in power when the pedal hits the metal, it's only 10 horsepower shy of 300. With a brand new aerodynamic body kit that creates downforce where there was previously lift and an option for semi-slick tires, this thing comes straight from the factory ready to embarrass any of your friends at any track day. And because of the Golf's rich history for being one of the most popular hatchbacks for all auto enthusiasts, you'll get the highest honors in a worldwide gang of Duggars, making this one of the most lusted after front wheel drive hatchbacks ever made. The Integra Type R is said by many, including Pumphrey, to be the best front wheel drive car ever made. It was the best front wheel drive, naturally aspirated car of all time. And after receiving an anonymous death threat by Pumphrey for trying to place it lower on the list, I had to reconsider why it deserves to be number one. After some deep thoughts in the shower, I finally figured out why Integra fans are so out of control passionate about this car. Sometimes it's not about being the fastest car ever made. It's about creating an all around fantastic driving experience. Acura did not cut any corners when developing this car. There isn't anything on it that takes away from its pure driving experience. It doesn't have AC or cruise control or a sunroof or even a rear wiper. Acura even stitch welded the chassis so that it doesn't flex under stress. And the shape of the car is beautifully simplistic. It's sort of like the Japanese road car version of the iconically shaped Lotus 56 IndyCar. Like I said, I was having some really deep thoughts about this, but the Type R's crown jewel is its B18 C5, which simply put is one of the best motors ever made. Each 
one was hand built by Honda's engine builders, and they had a red line of 8,300 RPM. It was one of the highest revving motors you could buy at the time, and it blew everyone's mind. Just like most of the cars on this list, they are hard to find. Because it's such a fun car to drive, people rarely sell them. And when they do, they ask the big bucks. And deservedly so, because it's one of the greatest front wheel drive cars of all time. Well, that's my list, and I'm forced to stick to it. Let me know your favorite front wheel drive cars. Here's a little secret. My favorite car isn't even on this list. That's because it was the very first car I owned, the Corrado VR6. If you want to learn more about it, check out this other video I made on the tuner cars you can buy for under 10K. Be sure to check out some of our merch at shop.donut.media. Go ahead and add me on IG at Secret Skills, and I'll see you next week.